Kane S4522 uh, ball bonder. Now being a 4522, you're able to do ball bumping with, with it. Uh, I will demonstrate that next, but for now we'll just go ahead and do a bond. I have the, uh, all the parameters set up to do a one mil gold wire. And uh, in order to do the bond, do you have your, uh, I have my work on the work holder here, it's set at 150C. Uh, you have a chessman here that moves your uh, work underneath the uh, bonding head. And in order to do a bond, you'd press and hold the uh, left chessman button. That'll bring you to search one. So I'm at search one now. You can reposition. Once you uh, decide you're in the correct position, you release the button. So now the ball has been uh, placed at the uh, first bond position. Now it's at loop. Loop height can be adjusted with the loop knob over here. You can see the bond head move up and down. So once you determine you have a good loop height, uh, you can step back and do your second bond. Again, press and hold the left chessman button. Release to make the bond. Again, press and hold, bond one. Step back, bond two. Now with the ball bonder, you can also step forward or in any, any direction in a 360 degree. Okay, um, you can do a manual bomb by switching the switch to manual Z and you'd be using the black thumb button here on the left and that'll bring your head down to make you bond. And you have complete control of the Z head motion. There's bond one, and then bond two. So again, manual bonding is done with the uh, black button here. Okay, we, what we'll do is we're going to hit the reset button and hold down both. Oh, this is called the stitch button. If you want to do a stitch, uh, that won't do the second. Uh, that you can complete on uh, to do a, uh, more than one bond at your second level. I'll show you how to use that. We're going to press down on the right chessman button. Oh, let's take it out of auto. Let's do semi-automatic mode. There's bond one. I'm going to press and hold the stitch button. And you can see you can continually make a bond until you decide you want to complete the bond process. And you release the chest uh, this, uh, stitch button and go ahead and make your final bond. And then it's press and hold. First bond, I'm going to press the uh, stitch button, which is on the right side, and do some stitch bonds. You can see the making bonds until I release this stitch. And that's your final bond. All right, let's uh, show you how to set up for the uh, ball bumping process and what you do there is hit the reset button and press and hold both the semi-automatic button and the stitch button. Now if you look over here you see our, I'm pressing the stitch button to tell us what uh, setup I'm in and this is indicating that uh, I think that's the, uh, the ball button. Let's go ahead and try that. Yeah, so you can see a ball is formed. So right here I'm doing a uh, ball bumping. So it's just putting a uh, ball bump down on the uh, coupon. Okay, now to get back to uh, manual uh, semi-automatic bond mode, you would hit the reset button and press and hold the left chessman button. This is in a manual that you receive, so to explain how to switch between uh, types of bonding. There's also a, a coining or tab bonding uh, option available. And here you can see that the first button, the first light is uh, flashing only. So we're back to uh, your standard semi-automatic bond. You can see, press hold, first bond. Second search here, and make the second button. Okay, let's quickly uh, explain some of the buttons here. We have a uh, again uh, the loop setting, which I explained before. 
That's your uh, height between uh, right after the first bond. We have a tail setting. That's the amount of wire that's left after the after the second bond uh, was, is left below the capillary. You have a test button that tests your ultrasonics to make sure you're tuned properly. You can see that that's lighting up. We have a clamp button. The clamp button switch will uh, open your wire clamps as well as your drag clamp. This is all explained in the manual, like I said. Uh, you do have a light on off. These are your bond one parameters, which is your search height, power, time, and force. For bond one is up on top, bond two is down here. Again, the same search power, time, and force. And going over to the right hand side here, we have an on off switch for your motor. That's your Z head motor. Um, you have your reset and setup. Now we do have NEFO, which stands for negative electronic flame off. We have that on, and that enables the uh, voltage to go to your EFO one, which is right here. And if there's any troubleshooting that needs to be done with the system, you can shut that off, and then it'll allow you to continue bonding. It, this also will have a short and open uh, detector, so if you, if the wire short, if the uh, ball is not formed because of a short or an open, it will indicate right here. We have a manual spark if you ever have to manually uh, create a ball. I'm going to go through that. Uh, and then we have our ball size is adjusted here. That's the, uh, we'll determine the size of the ball that's formed. And then on this go up here, we have a, a two inch spool of gold wire. This is ball bonding wire. It's fed through the uh, feed tube here, down through the feed tube. There's a, a glass slide that can be removed. It'll go underneath the glass slide through this eyelet and then it's going to go down through the drag clamp so you need to open the drag clamp and then put it between the two eyelets and the two glass plates here. The drag clamp is used to seat the ball up into the tool after the ball is formed for on your first bond and then you have your wire clamps that are open here and then down you'll go down through your uh, capillary. And then finally we do have a, a spotlight indicator. Uh, let me shut the light off on that. You can see a little green dot there. So what you do here is you make a bond and then you adjust your spotlight uh, targeting uh, light to where the bond was warm. So that as you go to make your next bond, you just bond to where the green light is and it'll, it'll match exactly. So what I'll do is I'll show you how to form a, uh, a ball, manual ball. Let me try this. I'm just going to increase the tail size to 10 and then go ahead and do a bond. Now you can see that since the tail size is long, which means the amount of wire that's left after the second bond, we get a short over here. So the NF, because the wand, the wand is hitting the wire, it's a little hard to see at this without a magnification, but the NF, NEFO is indicating that we do have a, a, a short. So what I'll do here, I'll open the clamps, I'll pull a wire up like so, close the clamps, and I'll go ahead and, and let me readjust the ball size to, my tail size to three, and this is what you call a bond off. So I'll bond it off and now we created a ball that way. Uh, there's another way to create a ball. If you have a problem is, let me just, uh, we'll feed some wire down like that. So we have a little tail left. I'll close the clamps and I can push the EFO wand over by pushing on the uh, solenoid up here. To the left. And then I can hit the uh, manual spark. And you can see it spark there and created a ball. Okay, that should be.